Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our virtual event. I'm so excited to have all of you guys join us today. Um, we have people from SoCal all the way from Washington State to New York. So this is pretty exciting to see all of these wonderful faces. Um, with that, I do want to say once again, thank you guys for coming here. But also we have some amazing guests for tonight's show. So we have the lovely Tehran who will be sporting some amazing comedy, as well as our performer Asadi who will be playing some very very dope music, if I do say so myself. So without further ado, Tehran, the spotlight is yours. Am I on? Are we here? You're on, you're on. You see Riverside, Santa Barbara, all the UCs all in one place. This is an amazing thing. Thank you to all the organizers, Farzana, Daria, and the entire crew of people that have made this happen. Are there a lot of people here today Fazana, if you can help me, are there a lot of people that don't speak Farsi at all? I think most do, but there might be a couple who don't. Oh, a couple who don't? Pass mom meeting push that a hammer on a half design that I said, and if I'm not watching the game, Khadiji, you know. Just to let you know, if you don't speak Farsi, I just welcomed you to the meeting the same way all Persians do welcome you to their homes. That's how they work. If you hear the word Khadiji and you don't speak Farsi, they're talking about you. Like you need to know these rules. I'm going to break down a lot of Persian culture, a lot of Noru's and a lot of love for you all today. If you hear the word Khadiji, if you hear the word Khadiji, they are talking about you. And in fact, my dad, my dad, who's Iranian, because I know you thought I was one of you. I'm one of them. Like my dad, who's Iranian, he loves, not only does he just say Khadiji, he's, he loves to add a little hurt because that's what Persian parents do. They say Khadiji, but no, 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 Khadiji Khar, like it has to hurt. Like they can't just say Khadiji, it has to be like Khadiji Khar, it's like stupid Khadiji. Khadiji means foreigner. And it's so crazy because my mom, my mom is black, like my mom is black American. And it's so fun because my dad loves saying Khadiji Khar. And I'm like, who are you talking? He's like, Khadiji Khar, tell the Khadiji Khar to leave the house. I'm like, Bubba, that's mom. Can you please stop doing that? She understands what you're saying, bro. Like she knows what Khadiji Akhar means. And the funniest thing is because Khadiji, Khadiji is a word. Khadiji means foreigner. Khadiji means foreigner, which is crazy because Iranians understand what happened. Iranians came from Iran to America and started calling Americans Khadiji. Do you understand what kind of confidence it takes to do that? To come from Iran in America and start calling Americans Khadiji. Like, yo, you're a guest and now you just own the home. Like, this is my place. Kick your feet up. Mi casa is su casa. But that's how Iranians are, a culture that's been around for 5,000 plus years and a tradition in Noru's, which has been around more than 3,700 years. I want people to understand how long Noru's as a tradition has been around. Because when you're looking at American history, American history is what, like 200 years old on a good day? Iranian culture has been around for 5,000 years and Noru's as a tradition, as a tradition has been around for 3,700 years. Iranians invented everything. If you ask an Iranian, you got to understand how that works. They'll tell you Tyrannosaurus Rex. No, it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex, first dinosaur from Iran. Like they love saying they invented everything and even everything in America. My bubble will just make stuff up. Abraham Lincoln, Abraham, Abraham, he has a beard, Tehran, he's one of us. Like they love taking credit for everything. But when it comes to the tradition of Noru's, which is the first day of spring and also the Persian New Year's, Iranians actually do get the credit. Noru's, which literally means new day. And I don't know who wrote Nowruz because it's spelled N-O-W-R-U-Z. Who wrote that? Why do we say it like we have a Scottish accent? Nowruz. How's your Nowruz? It's Noru's. I feel like it should be N-O-R-U-Z. O O Z. That's how I would spell it, but I didn't get to write it. But Noruz, which is the first day of spring and the first day of the Persian New Year, is actually one of the celebrations across the world. They celebrate Noruz in many different countries. People think it's only in Iran, but it's not. They celebrate Noruz in Afghanistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. Basically, if your country ends with the Stan, you celebrate Noruz too. You know what I'm saying? If your country ends with the Stan, 
you celebrate Nora. I don't write the rules. I just read them. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it works. And the best part about Noru's is this. The best part about Noru's is this. It, not only is it a tradition steeped in universalities of peace, happiness, and love, which comes from this original Zoroastrian thought process of Goftarinik, Kerdarinik, Pendarinik, good thoughts, good words, good deeds, right? It comes from a tradition that's steeped in a form of religious mysticism. And I'll explain to you why. Now, you may think that only Iranians celebrate Noruz. However, however, if you think about it, when you say the months September, October, November, December, Sept, and all of you go to UCs, you better know this, Sept means seven, Oct means eight, Nov means nine, Dec means 10, right? So September, September, which is the ninth month, Sept actually means seven. So Sep means seven, Oct means eight, like an octagon, October eight, Nov means nine, Dec means 10, then January, February 11 and 12, and March was actually originally the first month of the year for everybody, for everybody, which is why the months in Iran actually match up with the zodiac signs. And a lot of people don't know that because a lot of these correlate. In fact, for people who don't know a lot about the Iranian tradition, understand that when Jesus is born, three wise men visit him at the manger. That's the Christmas story. Well, what the Christmas story sometimes forgets to mention, that these three wise men, the Magi, were Persian Zoroastrian priests. Persian Zoroastrian priests who visit baby Jesus at the manger. And how do you even know they're Persian? Not only does the Bible say that they're Persian Zoroastrian priests, but they also brought a baby gifts of frankincense, mare, and gold. Who else brings mare and gold to a baby but Persians? They probably bought, brought baby Jesus a BMW too. Like, hey, BMW, mi khodache, khodbasash begi, khodas. Like, yo, that's just how it works. You have to know the history. And with the Noru's, there's a lot of traditions. So going back to the traditions of Noru's, the first part of Noru's is Khunetekani. Khunetekani, which is literally shaking the house, really means shaking it up or basically the spring cleaning that all cultures uh, are acclimated to, the idea of cleaning up for the spring. It comes from the Persian culture, which is to clean the house in order to rid it of all of its evil nature but it also came down to medicinal purposes as Persians were in the empires and in the ancient world, some of the cleanest, most efficient people in the world. Cleanest, most efficient people in the world. Sometimes now they're not, like some of you need deodorant. That's not me, that's some of you, but I'm not gonna point out any names. Nami Tahiri, I see your Paris police background. I see you showing a lot of pride. Ariana Kalambor, if you smile one time, I'll be happy. Thank you. Just one time. No, no, no. Don't do it too much. Amir Sadat, um, clean your room, bro. <laughs> clean your room. It's Khonatekani. You should have done this for Noru's. But the reason you have Noru's is because first with the spring cleaning, you're cleaning up and you're cleaning out all of the evil spirits. Then comes Char Shamba Suri. Now, if you know anything about Char Shamba Suri, Char Shamba means Wednesday, Suri is to burn. You're basically burning away your Wednesday on Tuesday night. The Tuesday night before Noru's is known as Char Shamba Suri. And what do we do on Char Shamba Suri? Yes, we jump over the fire. That's one of my favorite things. Because, hey, who doesn't want to call the fire marshal on a holiday? I do. Persians. So that's the fun thing to do. Huh? You jump over the fire and you say a phrase. And I want everyone to say it with me. I can see you, Farzad. You're not saying anything. Let's go. Rosmina, I need you. Which is basically saying, I want all of my illness to you and all of your strength to me. Now, most people think we're saying it to the fire, but we're actually just cheshming each other. We're like, yeah, that's right, Sanaz. You think I forgot you wore the same shirt I did the other night? Like, it's like, you're just jinxing everyone. But you're saying it to the fire so that you get that flame, that power from the flame to you, because that's the strength of fire. Fire like a candle, if you light one candle, you can light another one with it. And now you have two candles that can light two more. 
میشه چهار تا شم دو تا شم روشن میکنی یک شم استفاده میکنی یک شم روشن میکنی دو تا شم دیگه هم میتونی باهاش روشن کنی now you have four candles lit before you can go get eight eight sixteen sixteen thirty two next thing you know there's an entire nation or world of fire of the flame that's within our hearts that's the reason why one of the tenets of Norse is to be the change to change yourself it's all about reflection we also go to setting up the half scene that's a really important part the half scene is a wonderful table that we love to set up where we have half the scene half the scene words that start with the letter s in farsi now the half scene is supposed to be sabze samanu senjet serke seed sir somal now when i say that sabze sabze is the the green grass stuff that grows right the green grass stuff that grows and i'll explain why we grow that samanu samanu is that pudding stuff that brown pudding stuff that no one eats but we all have seen it only during noruz like no one else no other time would we ever have that um sinjit sinjit is that dried berry that we're like what the crap is that berry like where do you even find these old ugly berries and why do we have them on the table um serke is vinegar we all know vinegar it smells bad we put our uh we put vegetables in it and it tastes delicious later seed is apple apple which is right there it's like uh, uh it's like sleeping beauty you know you gotta you get that apple and then now you're sleeping forever then you get the sear the garlic right like hey oh my god persian food doesn't make your mouth smell enough let's have some sear let's add some garlic and then somal which tastes amazing on kebab it's like a little somak which you put on stuff now each one of these things has a meaning okay and that's why it's important you have to know what the meanings are so sabze is the grass and it signifies rebirth and growth and it's also soaking up all of the evil and all the jinx and all the chesh that's in your house it's soaking it up for you it's just soaking it up samanu that represents um power and strength it's like the strength of it right sinjid the uh, uh, the little the dried berry that's the symbol of love dried up old stanky love that's what it's for it's love the original f boys for persians i don't know why that's our love somal is the symbol for the sunrise the sunrise reminds you that every day there will be a new day there will be a new chance for you to relive and regrow right so you get that sunrise serke is the symbol of patience vinegar is the symbol of patience then the apple the seed is the symbol of beauty um and it shows you a lot about it because it's a beautiful fruit and it's a beautiful reminder uh of who you are on the inside and of course seer seer back then was a symbol of medicine it was really important for medicine and health so that's why you have the garlic but then you have other letters s that happen to be on the table too sonbol which is the plant that the hasten plant that we have there that always dies like right before noruz you have seke the gold coins the gold coins that is like for wealth and prosperity and then you put a clock sometimes near the a saat you put a clock near the half scene just so you have the you know what time it is cuz Iranians are always going to be late like this show whoever expected the show to start on time is not Iranian like this show clearly wasn't going to start on time i'm half black half persian i didn't even know this was today i thought this was yesterday i just showed up now that is how it works it's genetic you know what i'm saying we're always late and then you also have eggs uh tohma morf misery it's a symbol of fertility also the basis of the easter egg it comes from the noruz table mirror aina misery you put a mirror cuz a self reflection now we all know it's only because persian moms love looking at themselves before they take a picture so they have to like look at the mirror and persian dads love fixing their hair even though they don't have hair like what are you fixing baba like you have no hair you're bald you're bald uh mehyar i see you have a lot of hair on your head right now Two weeks from now, you're gonna be bald, bro. Just understand that's how Persian genetics work. I'm lucky that I'm half. I'm lucky I'm half. That's all I'm saying. I'm six foot two. I mean, and I'm six foot um, two. I, and it really depends. Yeah, it's genetics. Like, I mean, in terms of like, um, I find no one's bald. Like, no one in my family is bald. But uh, I see why you would say that. To, oh, thank you, Mehyar. Man, how you do such a bad half as I am? Can we mute him? So listen, this is what's going on right now, bro. Like. نو ما ما الان چشم زدم تو کچل بشی حالا گوش کنیم سو یو سی دیز اند دن یو آلسو پوت یو آلسو پوت لایک ا ا کندل 
right? We talked about the candle already, a sham. And then you put a goldfish. The goldfish, uh, of course, not only is it the most Persian thing to put a goldfish, because goldfish, it's like, who, Persians walking into the store with like, hey, we want fish. Okay, sir, what kind? Gold. We want the goldfish. <laughs> no, 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 gold. I'm Persian. <laughs> like, why the goldfish? Who thought a goldfish? And the goldfish always dies the day before Noru's too. I don't understand, unless Mahyar is gonna give me some genetic explanation on how goldfishes are actually part of the zoological system of the ocean, and we can get to that too. And then a book. The book is something like a kitab. Uh, it's a kitab of your wisdom, like whatever book you believe in. Some people put uh, a, a Torah, some people put a Bible, some people put a Quran, some people put kitab a hafiz, Whatever is close to you, you know, Baha'is put a book, everyone has a different book and it's all about inclusivity because the original Persian culture was all about inclusivity, which is why we don't have a word that differentiates between man and woman. We don't have a he or she. We can only say me, you, us, they, them. That's it. Because Farsi in the language is, is gender neutral because in original Persian empire, men and women were equal which is why in the Greek Iliad and Odyssey, only four women are mentioned. The Helen, the queen, Aphrodite, Athena. But in the Shahnameh, over 56 women are mentioned. In fact, more women are mentioned by name than men, including Artemis, the amazing hunter. So just remember that, that that's part of our culture to begin with. Now, you get to Noru's. You have Noru's. No one ever knows what time it is because it's at the exact time of the spring solstice. And we all have to become engineers just to figure out what time Noru's is. Like it's never at midnight, right? It's never just at midnight. It's at like 5.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in Ohio. Like why can't it just be simple? But it, the point is it's exactly when spring becomes and the family sits around and then boom, the best part, you get gifts. And the gifts is usually cash. But you know, as you get older, the cash gets less. Like now that I need money, don't give me a $2 bill. I don't need your $2 bill, Bubba. I need real money right now, okay? I have college loans that are gonna last forever. What's this $2 bill? I can't even buy a Snickers. Snickers is $2.19. Do you understand? When I was a kid, I used to cake up. And then on top of that, you start talking to people and family members you haven't seen. Now, we live outside, the, outside of Iran. So since we live outside of Iran, we talk to a lot of family members that we, we don't even really know. And a lot of people who think our family members, Khaled and Amu, they're not really our family members. They're just like people our parents met yesterday. And they're like, look, Amu Babak. It's like, doesn't Amu Babak work at the gas station? Yes, he's our Amu now. But we do have real Amus and Ames and Khalas and, and Dais who are in Iran. In Farsi, we differentiate between your uncle and uncle on your dad's side and your uncle on your mom's side. Amu is your uncle on your dad's side. Dai is your uncle on your mom's side. Your mom's brother is Dai. We do the same thing with, with ants. We do the same thing. Ame, Ame is your aunt on your dad's side. And Khale. Khale is your aunt on your mom's side. Now, here's the trick. Everyone loves Khale. No one likes Ame. I don't know why. I don't know why that happens. Like, Ame can be so nice and everyone hates Ame. Khale, Khale is hot. Khale is young. Khale is good looking. Khale can be old and she's still young. Khale comes in the Mehmuni like, Khale is here. Khale is here. Hey, everybody, Khaled time. Khaled's hair doesn't even get white. It turns blonde. It turns red. Khaled's nose gets smaller every year. But Ame, Ame, no one likes Ame. Ame's old. Ame has a wart. Ame is always serious. Hello, Ame, John. Why? Why don't we like um, Ame? We call Khaled, Khaled, Khosh, Khaled, Khaled, Khube. Ame, but Ame, Pagamigin, Ame, Gorge. Wolf, aunt. That's all we say. I'm like, why? And nobody ever wants to talk to Ame on the phone. Because Ame, Ahmed doesn't have anything to say. Ahmed's conversation is always the same every single year. Ahmed calls, Ahmed calls, and it's like, Ahmed? No, I don't want to talk to Ahmed. And then Baba's like, Tehran, Budu, Ahmed, play telephone. And you're like, no, I don't want to talk to Ahmed. I don't want to talk to Ahmed. It's like, Ahmed, Ahmed. You know, every conversation with Ahmed is the same. Salam, Ahmed Jun, Khubam. Ale. 
بله 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 نه هنوز دکتر نشدم نه هنوز دکتر نشدم امه I am freaking 55 years old I'm not gonna be a doctor امه okay if I'm not doing doctor stuff I'm not gonna be a doctor because that's all Amma wants is for you to be a doctor and then your parents just want you to be a doctor and now everyone just wants you to be a doctor in a Persian family and it's like why just so they can save on health care and you know what makes it worse is that Persian parents were right if we were doctors we wouldn't have COVID right now if all of us had listened to Persian parents we would have lived Kiana are you studying to be a doctor yeah Kiana are you studying to be a doctor Yes. <laughs> that's, Kiana, that's amazing. Rojin, are you studying to be a doctor? Yes. <laughs> that's what's up. Rojin, that's too. Uh, Farzan, Farzan, are you studying to be a doctor? Farzan, are you there? Farzan, you have to go to it. Farzan, are you studying to be a doctor? He said no. Oh, Farzan said no? Oh, Chak Bar said a Farzan. Listen, be a doctor, bro. Learn to be a doctor. That's what Persian parents love to say. Oh, Dr. Nisi, Chak Barun Sadatkan. They love hurting us. Persian parents love their kids more than anyone, but they love with hurt. They love with hurt. You know what I'm saying? One time when I was a kid, I, um, I was a kid, I got dropped off at the playground and I saw, I saw a, a white dad drop his son off. And he said something I'd never heard. He said, have fun, son. I love you. That's what he said. My Bubba never told me to have fun. If you're a Persian kid, you're never allowed to have fun. Have fun. Like they have chores. They don't just have fun. You know what I'm saying? You have to earn fun. And I was like, Bubba. And he was like, what? And I was like, Bubba, do you love me? And my Bubba looked at me and was like, of course I love you. I pay for everything. You don't pay for nothing. I carry you in my stomach for 19 months. I'm walking here all the way from Iran. I ask you to do two little things. Clean your room, become doctor. You did nothing. I'm six years old, bro. Like I'm six. That's how Persian parents roll. One time I got dropped off at school and I was late because I'm always late. And my bubble was like, and my teacher was like, oh, Terin, that was so beautiful. Was that Farsi? Oh my God, that sounded like poetry. What did your father say? And I said, oh, my father, he just told me that he's going to choke me and kill me. And if I'm late to school one more time, he's going to hope I die and that I'm going to never, <laughs> I'm going to be squished. And they called Child Protective Services. That's how that works. That's how that works. Only in America do we have child protective services. In Iranian families, we don't have child protective services. The closest thing we have is mamani. Grandma is like, that's all we have. That's the only savior that we have for child protective services. So going back to Noruz, right? I'm giving you a lot of cultural context because at the 13th day of Noruz, which is today, which is the 13th, day to get rid of, you get rid of the 13th day. And the way you do that is that you and your family go to a park or somewhere that's natural in nature, and you go and you take that sabzi, that sabzi that you had been throwing on your, on your table, you take that with you. You take that with you and you allow all the evilness and all the jinxing that it's been soaking up and you take it and you throw it in the water. You throw it in the water, so that you are now washing away. And if you want to get married, you tie it in a knot and that's supposed to bring you luck in marriage. Luck in marriage. And don't forget all the sabzi polo mahi you've been eating since Noruz, right? So you've been eating fish and rice since Noruz because they make so much of it, you're stuck eating leftovers for the next 13 days. So at this point, you're pretty much tired of Noruz the same way all of you are basically tired of me. But I would like to say to all the parents, on the call that ما واقعا به شماها پدر مادرای ایرانی افتخار میکنیم واقعا دست شما درد نکنه باعث که اینقدر زحمت ما رو کشیدین و زحمت کشیدین که خارج از کشور جامعه و سرشناس و قوی شدین آفرین به شما و همه بچه های شما که واقعا دوستان که فرهنگشون رو حفظ باشن So I just want to make sure the parents understand that they're loved, they're appreciated, they're heard, they're understood and I'll say this before I go is that 
honestly, sometimes as parents, we want to talk to you. We want to say stuff to you that's important to us. So sometimes we need you to be our friends. And I know Iranian parents are, they love their kids so much. That's why we all still live at home. We are the real Iranian hostage crisis. They never let us leave. But the point I want to make is that please be our friends sometimes and show us that love. We want that love from you. I want you to be understanding. I had to tell my Bubba something that was very difficult for me over the break. I had to tell my Bubba that I was gay and um, I'm not gay, but I thought it'd be easier to tell him that I'm gay than that I was not going to be a doctor. I felt like he would take the news better, right? So I was like, Bubba, I'm gay. And he was like, I know. And I was like, no, Bubba, I'm joking. He's like, no, oh, you're gay. Oh, Tehran, it's my fault. I should have named you Ghazmin. I don't know what I was thinking, but he did something I never expected. He was like, but Tehran, I tell you something, even though you're gay, I know you're gay. You're my son and I love you. And I was like, oh, he'd never said that. And he said, I love you, Tehran. You're my son and I love you. And as long as you become gay doctor, I will always love you. But if you don't become gay doctor, die. So that is our story of Noruz. Thank you everybody from all the UCs that have gathered in one place. Thank you to each and every one of you. Daniel, if you don't smile one more time, I'm on a show. Find me on social media all across the board at I am Tehran. And Yek Dasbev, Sakhare, Bachahe, UC Riverside, Santa Barbara, UCLA, USC, and all the schools involved. Yek Dasbev, Sakhare Show. I'm out. Tehran, Tehran. Sorry, if everyone can unmute and give like a warm round of applause, that was amazing. Yeah. Like, wow. Shot my love. I think everyone can. Oh, yeah. Now you can unmute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Great job. Um, I did get one request though, Tehran. Someone did ask, do we get a shot at roasting you? Now, I don't know if they're still up for it, um, but if you are, or if anyone else is, speak now or forever hold your peace. I'm I'm too much of a coward, so. I would never. I'm I open for sure. it. I'm open. Just remember, I'm a professional. Do you understand? <laughs> I'm a professional. Not only do I do comedy, I'm also half black, right? And as a half black person, we are waiting to roast others. Yes. You understand? We roast chicken, we roast <laughs> peanuts, and we roast Persian students who come for us. So let me know. I think it's a great idea. But I appreciate all, all of you for doing this. This is amazing, especially during COVID. The fact that we don't get to touch each other doesn't mean we don't get to touch each other's lives. So thank you so much for doing this, all of you. And of course, who's in the crowd? Was it Farzan that wanted to roast me? Please tell me it was Farzan. Yeah. Please it tell was. me it was Farzan. I don't know, Farzan. Farzan, could you speak? I would like to hear his voice. But Farzan's like kind of a mystery at this point. Okay, well, without further ado, if our other performer, our wonderful Asadi is ready, then we can get started. If not, we can give a little bit of a um, break for you guys to kind of get some tea and water to get settled. But if you're uh, ready, guys, on your end, then we can like start the music part of the show. So. Yay. Let's see. Give it one second. Also, please follow us on Instagram as well. The wine, tea, shooting, these are all very good things to get. We're going full on Persian. That is a Persian party without snacks and tea and shooting. I was telling them before, I, I just have a feeling my mom's going to come in and catch a destiny for me. What are you doing? Like, what is this <laughs> shit? Oh, rust um, me, mom on it. Rust me, mom on it. No, stop. <laughs> I'm on it. Tell her it's a big office hour. We're all like... Studying. Actually, can I just read a text really quick that my dad sent for all of you? Oh my God, yes, please. Yes. Yeah, my dad said, so my brother just sent that. I don't know what it was for, but oh, that was no. so, Dude. Yeah. The notorious Oh, he, he wrote a PS. Okay, so that's, a, that's enough for Bubba. That's enough from Bubba. That's what's up. Oh my God. That's enough from Bubba. Bubba loves to start trouble 
بابا نوید گرم چرا باز که ببینم فرزان is sounding off in the chat smiley faces yeah if you have a fake background that just means you have a horrible place you live that's what it really means it's just i'm just saying if you have a fake background daria ashkan you don't want Ash anyone what? no one wants to, you don't want anyone to know where you live you don't want to see the truth like ariana look at ariana great smile regular background she lives somewhere right, <laughs> right there that heart that heart's chilling in her look it's right. chilling in her room clearly in her room rojin rojin's rojin's like room is pristinely clean you know okay well daniel y'all we, we can't be rojin okay. daniel daniel clearly <laughs> owns bitcoin and nft you understand that's who daniel is daniel owns bitcoin and nfts he might not get the girls now but in 20 years he's going to be falling you know what i'm saying okay. i'm just letting you know mohammad mohammad's wearing a mask as he's by himself i don't know why how much covid do you have bro sara <laughs> sara's sitting there sara's got a crew sara's covid friendly sara's just in the world Farzad, Farzad is making an app as we speak. He's creating an app that's going to change the world. And by change the world, I mean make him rich. So make sure. See them, uh, yeah. Tina, Tina's just chilling, bro. Tina, Tina's, 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 Tina's going to get married young. Tina's, Tina's probably already <laughs> married. Tina's already married. Sina, Sina, Sina's going to work with Farzad to make an app. Sina's, Sina's going to be a doctor, a lawyer, and the president of the United States. <laughs> That's who Sina's going to be. Sina's an overachiever. Sina's an overachiever. Nusha? Nusha's going to crash her car because she's texting, driving, and on Zoom. Nusha's like, Nusha, have you never watched these commercials? Kimia, if you don't become an astronaut, I will be so upset at you. I will be so upset. I will be so upset. Is Asadi ready to make this happen? I think so. Getting yes, ready. He needs, he needs to get ready. He needs we to, get need to ready. hype him up. There, there needs to be a chorus. Because honestly, chorus. the energy on this Zoom, it's, it can be a lot more. It can be a lot more. I can feel the energy coming from people. Um, Mahjabin, Mahjabin, if I'm saying that correctly, if I'm not, that's your fault. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I'm not, honestly, it's your, it's your fault. I'm not going to lie. So Mahjabin, I hope you're doing well. You know, you look like you're an excellent cook. Excellent cook, probably an amazing student, you know, great at doing your eyebrows. I see the, I see the, I see the potential. Navid, Navid, I don't trust Navid. I don't trust Navid. Navid can never get on an airplane. Navid can never get on an airplane. Yeah, Navid, I don't trust Navid. Amir Talibi. Yeah, Amir Jun, I'm sorry, you can't get on one either. Amir can't get on one either. Oh. Arizona, is Amir your dad? Is Amir your relative? Amir is actually my, uh, if it is the Amir that I think it is, it's my brother. Oh, your brother. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, definitely, yeah. definitely your brother's never getting on a plane, bro. Definitely <laughs> getting stopped by TSA. Getting stopped by TSA. We are the disguised pasty Iranians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, he's, but we still he's get like, signaled. He's a spy. He's a spy. <laughs> all spy, yes. Optin looks like he just got to America yesterday from Iran. Optin oh, Kazazi, oh. you don't know my bitch. Optin, green card, the shine now gets there. What's up, Optin? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's my co-officer at UCSB. Aww. Who owes the officers? Who are the officers? Farzane, Darya, Ashkan, who else? We're all from different campuses. That's I what's know. up, but who else are officers? Parsoa. I can tell Parsoa is an officer. You can tell, <laughs> it's like, vote for me. Vote for me. <laughs> uh, I think I saw Layla is just sounding off in the chat. Layla, She's I think what, what's amazing, what's amazing is that how many Iranian women are leading the way. And that's something that people don't understand, that Iranian women have consistently led the way, whether it's politically, socially, religiously, or in any way, shape, or form. And that's what I love, is seeing strong, beautiful Iranian women. And I hope Iranian woman becomes president. I hope yes. an Iranian woman becomes president of the United States, because then the world would be a better place. They can do everything on a budget and make it look good anyway. You know what I'm saying? They'll be buying, we can buy countries from, we'll buy countries and oil from raw stress for less. You know what I'm saying? And yes. no one will even know the difference. Yes. And Iranian, Iranian women as a president, we wouldn't even go to war. They wouldn't go to war. Kesh Farah, I'm going to get the army card down. I just saw my arm is crazy. I'm going to get the army card down. I'm going to get the army card down. Like, it's amazing, you know? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know 
that in the Middle East, it's the women who lead the way. They always think that women walk behind the men. And in the Middle East, even Arab women don't walk behind their men. They walk beside their men. And to be very honest, it's the women who lead the way. Because there's a lot of landmines in the Middle East. That's why you can have four wives. That's why you have four wives. Like, oh, no, there goes Khadija. Bring me Fatima. Fatima, come, come. You go. 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 I'm Tehran. I'm out. I think you're... I think Daniel Asadi is ready to go and ready to rock and roll. I hope you all had as much fun with me as I had with all of you. Make sure to follow me on social media. Tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread the love. Just don't spread corona. I'm out. Bye. We love you, Tehran. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Tehran. Tehran. I am Tehran. I am Tehran. I am Tehran. All right, so without further ado, we have an amazing performer today. He is an acclaimed musician who has, oh, there's a bit of an echo. Um, he's an acclaimed musician who loves to mix um, Iranian music, uh, both old and modern beats together to bring you something new and unique. So without further ado, I would love to introduce Asadi. Um, yes, okay, floor is all yours. One second, one second. Have you all started with your sabza and like Gary your sabza to make a wish? Not yet. Maybe you should do it tonight. I don't know, whatever time zone you're at. Ours is too weather. All right, can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Yeah, yeah, you're coming in clear.
So far, so good. Is the sound okay? Is the sound okay? Let me know in the chat. You're doing great. Wonderful.
Represent the Persian people internationally till the day I fucking die.
I'm sorry, I, 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 uh, I messed up. Just let me try this again.
Guys, thank you so much for watching. I, I, I really appreciate it. And I hope to meet each and every one of you in person. For those of you who have been supporting me all this time, if it was since yesterday or since many years ago, I just want to thank each and every one of you. Seriously, uh, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And Eid al-Shamaha Mubarak. I, I really hope you guys have a fantastic summer. I really do. And I hope to meet you all again. I hope to meet you all soon. Thank you. Can we all give a round of applause? Can everyone unmute and give a round of applause to Asadi? That was amazing. Mashallah, mashallah. So good, so good. Um, we do have a little bit of a session right now where we can ask kind of Q&A questions from Asadi. So if you guys have any interest in his background or if you want to start, um, Danny, just like tell a little bit about yourself because I know you have like an amazing journey. Um, you could like summarize it if you don't want to like get into the whole thing, but um, definitely like go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Well, it was many years ago. Um, I'm I'm just a, uh, honestly, I'm just a normal Persian American kid. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, in a suburb called Dublin. And there's a pretty good uh, Persian community there. And ever since I was young, since I was five years old, I was always fascinated by music. And I always wanted to, I was so fa especially fascinated by like the music of the future, like anything innovative. Um, and in middle school, I, I, I'm skipping a lot of uh, journeys, but I guess I'll, I'll mention a few important things in my life is in middle school, my dad came back from Iran and, and brought me a sitar. And I never knew that such an instrument existed or let alone a style of music existed that's exclusive to Persians. And I immediately became so fascinated. And at the same time, I was obsessed with electronic music. I was getting really into production. 
um, you know, playing the keyboard, playing the drum pad and stuff. And I always wanted to bring them together and bloom them, bloom, I guess, just grow into this vision that I always had in my mind of making Persian sonically look and sound incredible um, in the West. So it's just always been my passion since I was about 14 to 16, about 14 years old, I have been pursuing this idea, this vision in my head that's always been to bring Persian music to America in a way that resonates with anyone of uh, any ethnicity, uh, born, born or, and especially Persians like me who are, they, they uh, are kind of in-betweeners where they don't feel like they fully belong they don't fully identify as Persians. They don't fully identify as Americans. And um, they feel like they're in this awkward middle. And I, I, I find myself running into a lot of kids like that, that basically just tell me like, it's so satisfying to, to, to hear your music. And that just, that just means the world to me that there are people in this world like me that are waiting for this type of music to really resonate um, in the United States and the rest of the world. And that's my horrible summary of my life journey as a musician. So horrible. No, I'm kidding. It was a great, um, but I do want to ask like, where do you see the future of your music going, especially when working with creatives like Daniel Farzam, for example? You know, Dan Daniel Farzam is, um, He's a, he's a director based out of Tehran, if you guys don't know. Um, his work mainly deals with fashion, but that's an understatement. Like, he's just incredibly talented. I mean, visually, it's glorious. Like, when I look at, when I look at his work, it, it reminds me of people like myself who are trying to make Persians look good. And um, he's a very passionate human being. And I'm just very grateful to know him because this, he's a, he's just, I, I, I guess I forgot your question. What were you saying? So where do you see the future of your music going, especially when working with these creative people? I think it's just, um, especially with working with these creative people, I think the future of my music is going to the mainstream. I, and it's very exciting. I feel the energy in the air. I think finally people are giving Middle Easterners um, including Iranians, a chance to uh, have a good reputation. It's been about 20 years since 9-11, and um, it's, we don't really talk about the wars going on in the Middle East. We're not really too involved in Afghanistan or Iraq anymore. The news doesn't really cover it. Um, so I've been noticing that slowly but surely kids have been, young kids have been saying, oh, you're Persian, that's cool. Oh, you're Arabic, that's cool. You're Middle Eastern, that's really cool. You know, there's no, there's starting to be a good connotation finally. And anytime that happens, art is considered, you know, music and art and film and all sorts of things and fashion. And I'm very excited. I think this is the decade for Middle Easterners to shine bright. I really, really do believe that. That's awesome. And if anyone wants to um, unmute right now and also ask a question, feel free. Um, and then if you have any questions for the audience, Danny, then go right ahead and also ask the two-way streak. Oh, I see Sam, you have your hand up. Sure. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for coming on. My name is Sam. I'm from the UCLA Iranian Student Group. And my question is, do you plan on working with other uh, very famous Iranian musicians and um, people in the music industry like Ebi or Daryush. I really hope so. I I hope these kinds of people will one day, uh, for lack of a better term, pass the trophy down to me, if you know what I mean. I hope that they can uh, trust me to collaborate them, co collaborate with them. Uh, I know for certain um you know there there are a few people that i am talking to right now i don't want to say it yet 
Um, but all I got to say is that it was a blessing to meet one of my idols, um, Fatima Aslani, and his good friend, an incredible musician, one of the top three flamenco guitarists in the world, Baba Kamini, and um, a few other people. Um, and I'm, I'm just really excited. I, I, I've been noticing, and it's the most satisfying feeling in the world, is, is people of all different ages and styles of music and generations and looks and attitudes, they're all interested in some way, shape, or form with my music. And it makes me, it just makes me feel, feel, I guess, I guess really grateful. I, I, I feel like I'm, I sound like I'm bragging. I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging, but I guess what I'm just trying to say is like, I've been feeling the energy lately with, with Persians and it just makes me so, so grateful. It just makes me so grateful that people are supporting an art that I, I will always believe that will exist. And I hope there's others out there like myself, my age, you know, or younger that are inspired by the work that I do and, 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 and can do an even better job than me, you know? I think we also have a question from Bahar. Bahar should be able to unmute. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Um, hi, I'm Bahar. I'm, I'm the creator of Chai Talk. I'm so happy that I was able to come here and see all you guys and meet all you guys. It's really an honor. Um, I guess the question that I had for him is that uh, would you, can like, was there, growing up, was there anyone, like, any particular artist that really inspired you to pursue music in the, in your future? Uh, just, just in general, like when I was younger? Yeah, when you were younger, when you had just started to, you know, learn different instruments and really um, develop a passion for music. My biggest inspirations when I was around, in, all my inspirations, I think, at, at its core came from my experiences in high school. Um, that being including uh, Pretty Lights, if you know of the, of the producer, live artists, Pretty Lights, or the DJs like Swedish House Mafia. But also, um, so that's kind of more in the electronic category, but also like, I was obsessed with Shahram Nazari and um, Hurvash, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's like Mahali, it's like Bumi, it's like folk, um, Hurvash Khalili. That was, uh, that was a huge inspiration, Sima Bina. And um, it was weird. Like I loved, I've always loved, for example, from like Masood Bakhtiari or Malik Mohammad Bakhtiari to some Baluchi artists to like Drake and Travis Scott. I see something with, with, with them. So, and I find it kind of hilarious. Drake is from my city, I think. I hear I said that. Um, okay, so Danny, do you have any, oh, we do have one more. Optin, do you have a question? Yeah, hello, thank you for your great performance. I was wondering, how do you choose the trap and genre? I'm sorry, what was the question? How did you choose the trap genre for your genre? Um, when trap hit the EDM scene, basically in the early, like 2013-ish, trap kind of started really uh, influencing, trap started to really influence the electronic music scene. So then there is a derivative of trap started to bloom called what people call EDM trap, electronic dance music trap. And artists that really made it shine bright were um, Bauer. He made the Harlem Shake, which went, which was like a video that went viral, a bunch of videos, a challenge, I guess. Foster Domus, Diplo, 
um, you know, people like that. Um, during that time, I was very, very inspired by that. That like triggered me because I was learning sitar. My friends were showing me this music and I'm like, that, that needs to go underneath the sitar. And ever since then, I called it Persian trap music. It, it was since I was 16 years old and I've been pursuing it ever since. Very nice, very nice. Um, so Danny, do you have a question for the audience or should we call it maybe, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you're comfortable with? Um, I don't really have a question off the top of my head. I feel like once I hang up, I'm gonna remember something. <laughs> I feel like there's something I would really wanna ask you guys. Um, I wonder maybe, um, why don't you guys write in the chat? I'm just really curious, like, how did you guys, if, if, if any of you know me, how did you uh, find out about me? Just write in the chat briefly, what song or what video was it? Like, just tell me the video or the song. I'm, I'm just really curious. I'm gonna go read it. Wow, so there's a lot of people saying like Google Stream Mix. That's surprising to me. Normally people say like Caspian or Throne or some Instagram video. It, it seems like most of you guys are saying Google Stream Mix or IG. And yeah, that's, that's really amazing. Um, it kind of, I think now I understand why my recent video, like the Shabbat Ish remix, did pretty well i um i think i'm gonna i'm gonna make more more remixes like that bring the bring the old legendary pop hits back to 2021 so definitely stay tuned wow that made my night you guys are yeah. awesome <laughs> that new song what is it what do the kids say now it slaps it's really good <laughs> Thank um you. yeah uh, and and i think for those of I think a lot of you guys know me through Instagram and I really, really appreciate it. And um, I can't say that enough because Instagram has, has fueled my career, has given me the opportunity to really show my music. If you guys ever are interested, you can check out my work on Spotify and YouTube. Um, that's actually the two platforms I've been taking the most seriously because at the end of the day, I'm a musician first and I like to release music on there often. This year I'm releasing, I've been releasing a song on Spotify on my Spotify page every two weeks. Every other Friday, there's been a song out and I've been promoting it on Instagram. Um, but if you like what you heard in this performance, I mean, this is just kind of an understatement of what, what is, I, I was only able to play you 30 minutes, you know? I think you guys would really appreciate the music that I put my heart and soul out and I would really appreciate if you guys checked it out. So thank you. You know, we're so excited that you came here and we're so grateful that you got to play some of your amazing hits. And it was honestly fantastic. We loved it. I subscribe to YouTube and Spotify. Yes. Yes. Please do. Thank you guys oh. so much. I appreciate it. If there's any more questions, please don't hesitate. We do have one more question. Go, Go ahead. Go for it. Hey, Danny. So like on your Instagram, I see some people like I, some song artists I know you follow. Um, I'm just wondering if you would like potentially like future, make future tracks with them. Um, After Hill. I don't know who that is. I don't know who After Hill is. <laughs> I don't know, you just, you follow him on Instagram. Like, he's also an artist. He's from my city. What does he do? He's also a song artist. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'll check him out. Yeah, he, he, he also made, yeah, he's from my city. 
as well. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. You, you, you just follow. And I, and I know some other people as well that you like from my city that you that you follow as well. But I'm just this is one of the song artists that uh, I I know yeah. I, I saw. Yeah. Okay. I'm totally just kidding with you. Him and I are best friends. We talk to each other all the time. Okay. We okay. have like we have like a few songs that we made and we're figuring out how we're going to uh, show it to the world. So definitely yeah. stay tuned. One of the best songs I've ever made in my life is with After Hill. Oh so, wow, that's that's nice. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, <laughs> I, I I see some like um I see some like music from him too, like the song artist. And and he's like more folk, like you're mostly like I can see like it's it's mostly guitar like or like sitar that you were performing. But yeah, and he had like I don't know, like he didn't he has like just like that that sort of like you were talking about, like that rap that rapper type trap music. Correct. I think he's 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 definitely um his style as an artist, first of all, his he's he's incredible like his voice is incredible he's a phenomenal singer the way he incorporates his uh persian influence is so so smart it's exactly, so creative yeah, it's and amazing. him and i are like yin and yang because i take care of the instruments and he takes care of the the lyrics and the vocals and the melodies together we're just like bonnie and clyde <laughs> yeah and that's what i was exactly what i was thinking like yeah it's it's amazing yeah thank you yeah just that yeah it's great yeah yeah i'm excited for that all right um so we <laughs> it's because of timing and everything we do want to get to the last part of our show um danny you are welcome to stay and hang out in the breakout rooms if you so choose to it'd be awesome i, I mean i know you have well i'll i'll let you go okay last question guys last question and then after omid we're gonna break out into breakout rooms um i think we only have time for like maybe like one session so i'll randomly assign you guys then you'll get to talk to people from other campuses but yeah go me omid go ahead Thank you so much, Farzana. Hey, Danny, uh, I'm a huge fan. I followed you, I think, since 2018. Um, actually, my American friend showed me uh, your songs, and I was like, oh, I had no idea. Um, at that time, you were just coming up with Roya, I think. But one of the questions I had was, um, do you plan on using some of Nagib's dad's uh, songs or so to create some new music? Um, obviously, for those who those, excuse me, for those who don't know Nagib, um, his dad is also a very popular artist as well. So do you have any plans for that? I, not at the moment, but I love his dad and we've always talked about how we want to do stuff together. Um, it just, I haven't had the chance to really move forward with it yet. It's funny you mentioned that because the other day I was thinking about it. I really do want to work on some stuff with Saeed Chan Mazorbe. Um, we'll see what happens. I think for now, um, I just need to finish up a lot of the projects that I'm working on, but maybe later this year, I, I can uh, humor the idea of just getting together with them. The problem is, is that they live in France and, and because of COVID, I can't really go visit there. So I, I have to, and, and it's, it's just hard working over the internet, um, especially when my vision is so specific. It's so different from what people expect. And uh, it just, it just works. It always, collaborations always just do better when they're in person. So I definitely will uh, visit France and make that happen, especially with Nahib. I mean, his percussion just blows my mind, blows my mind. Yeah, you guys did a great job at Tigran a couple of years ago. That was an amazing performance that I didn't get a chance to see live, but hopefully one day will in the future. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I can't, I hope to uh, perform at Tigran again one day too. Those guys really helped put me on the map in Toronto and I can't thank him enough. They they supported me so well. Awesome. So without further ado, sorry, I was, I was trying to get a picture of everyone, but it's, it's a little hard to do <laughs> speak review and everything. But um, without further ado, um, before that, actually, let's do a formal picture. I think that'd be really cute. So I'm in a screen uh, shot of the grid right now. So if you guys can turn on your cameras for just one second, I know it's not it sometimes you don't feel like beautiful and stuff but trust me all of you gorgeous human beings turn on those cameras ah oh, beautiful pedram you're a gorgeous human being come on i want to see your beautiful face no okay 
<laughs> shy today. Um, all right, let's see, where's everyone else? Okay, beautiful. I'm gonna do two screenshots because there's two screens. Okay, perfect. Ah, beautiful, yes, the legend. And Danny, if you could turn on, oh, I don't know if your camera works. <laughs> you could turn oh, on your- Oh, my camera's off again? Damn. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Let's see. All right, can okay. you guys see me? No. <laughs> Hold on. We've got some Iranians and non-Iranians here, which is really cool. Someone came in with the username. I'm not Persian. How about now? Not no. <laughs> Dang. Hold on one sec. One sec. One sec. Sorry. Take your time. Take your time. I felt really um, roasted by Tehran but whatever, it is what it is. Okay, he roasted me too. I had to change my background because, you know, it's okay. It's oh. <laughs> I had to change it twice. Like, he didn't like any of mine. <laughs> um, Baba Tehran especially told me to study, so I mean, oops. <laughs> Damn. I know, right? Tehran's already telling his dad about you. I know. Um, <laughs> hold on. Why is it not connected? Let me join from your phone. Ooh. Likewise, it was really there fun. We go. Can yeah, you guys, you there you go. The start video button. There we go. Can you guys see it? No. <laughs> start my video. Oh, there you go. Am I on? Awesome. Yeah, you're on. Oh, yeah, okay. I see you. All right. I see you, video. We see you. We see you. We see you, Queen King. <laughs> Everyone. Okay. Um, so three, two, one. Oh, Pedro, bring back your face. Um, and whoever G is. Okay, there we go. G has got a good screenshot. So I'm gonna count down to three for the first screen. Yek do se. Okay, screen number one. All right. So hold on, you still need to do screen number two. So let me save that really, really quick. I'm sorry, I'm really slow. Okay. And then let's do screen number two. Beautiful folks. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, you people who don't turn on their cameras, come on now. Okay, <laughs> screenshot number two. All right, awesome, beautiful. Um, now we're gonna do just a quick breakout room session. Um, I'm gonna probably split you guys up into, I think, uh, groups of, I wanna say, um, mm, let's do five. Five, yeah, five is a good amount. Five. Yeah, do five. Um, so breakout room, five. All right.